Hello, we're going to talk about the screw home mechanism of the knee and the locking mechanism of the knee. And we're going to dispute the myth that popliteus needs to contract to unlock the knee. So first of all, what is the screw home mechanism of the knee? Well, it's actually a concurrent lateral rotation of the knee during terminal extension. So usually considered like around the last 15 to 20 degrees of extension. And then thus a initial concurrent internal rotation of the knee as we go through flexion. And the reason we have those concurrent external and internal rotations is primarily based on the size and shapes of the condyles of the femur. So if we look at the condyles, this is a left femur. So we have a lateral condyle and a medial condyle. And even from here, we can already see that the medial condyle is a bit larger than the lateral condyle. And we can also see it from the side here. There's our medial condyle and our lateral condyle. And the condyle is from this groove right here back to this spot. And then on the medial side from this groove back here. And then they articulate with the condyles of the tibia. So as I go through extension, and I'm going to start with a reverse action, which simply means that the femur is going to move on the tibia. So as I go through extension, I get to the end of the lateral condyle before I get to the end of the medial condyle. So once I'm in this position, I have to keep extending, and I'm exaggerating it a little bit, but I have to get that concurrent external rotation to finish the knee extension. So again here, reverse action, going through extension. I get to the end range of the medial condyle, but I still have some extension left. So that causes a little bit of rotation here because this side, the medial side, is moving when the left side is more stationary. And also there's a little bit of a curve in that medial condyle that helps lead that rotation as well, as we can see here. So that little curve, in addition to being a larger condyle, that also contributes to that lateral rotation. So if we look at it the other way, we're not gonna be able to see the condyles as well, but this would be the standard action as I move through. And then I'm gonna kind of max out this medial side or the medial condyle again. And I have to finish the extension with a little bit of lateral rotation. Or if I look at it from here, extension, as I get to the end, a little concurrent lateral rotation. So it's only shaped on the condyles or based on the shape of the condyles. Uh, there's nothing that really truly locks the knee or that when you bend the knee, there's nothing that's preventing it from going into flexion. It's just because of the shapes of the condyles. If you start flexion from a fully extended position, you just naturally have that concurrent uh, medial rotation because of the shapes of the articular surfaces. On this model, I actually have a very rough representation of ACL because the ACL might contribute a little bit to that concurrent uh, lateral rotation during terminal extension. So if I go through extension and you can see that the uh, ACL is a little bit on the medial side of the tibia and it doesn't come all the way externally. It's just so I could get this to stay in place, um, which means it's pulling slightly laterally on the tibia. So if I get through extension here, I can actually feel some tension on uh, that tape that's representing the line of pull of the ACL. And if I do a little external rotation as I finish extension, it actually reduces that tension. So there probably is some truth to the idea that the ACL contributes a little bit to that concurrent lateral rotation that we see with full extension. So then the locking mechanism occurs when we max out the range of motion into extension. 
uh, that creates tension in the ACL, but it also creates tension in the collateral ligaments. So the medial collateral ligament and the lateral collateral ligament also get uh, some more tightness or they become more taut. So the tightness of the li those ligaments and the congruency of the uh, condyles of the tibia and femur as they are in a fully extended position really provides a lot of stability to the knee. It is the most, most stable position of the knees structurally, so sometimes called the closed pack position. So that is the locked position or the locking mechanism. But that locking mechanism just means it's more stable there. There's still nothing blocking the knee from coming out of that extension where you need to first or pull into that medial rotation. That medial rotation, as I come out of here, happens automatically no matter what muscles are contracting as long as they're pulling into flexion because of the shapes of the condyles. Uh, we do have several other muscles other than popliteus that could do knee flexion and internal rotation and those include sartorius, gracilis, semitendinosus, and semimembranosus. Uh, but for some reason popliteus has kind of been singled out as being the most important. Uh, but I'm fairly confident that that is a myth.